This production of Wareham Gateman Baseball is brought to you by the Gateman Baseball Network in association with the Cape Cod Baseball League. The Wareham Gateman are 2018 Cape Cod Baseball League champions. With a high-flying offense, miraculous defense, and lights-out pitching, they took the league by storm last season. Now, with a new manager, new players, and a new broadcasting crew, they'll look to go back-to-back and win their ninth title. Ripped out to left field and fairly deep, back to the track, to the wall, and this one is gone! A grand slam for Lyle Lockhart! Aaron's 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss! He got him on strikes! Talia goes down swinging, and that's the ball game. This one's absolutely roped by Will Robertson out to deep right field, and this one is going to be off the wall. Collins will play it on that hop. He's got to play at second base, and he threw him out! Isaac Collins from the warning track throws out Robertson at second base. Join Gabe Genovese, Jonah Karp, and Addison Van Patten for the 2019 CCBL season. Up the middle, base hit! Dunn will score easily. Shenton being waved home. He's going to score. And the Gateman leads 7 to 5 in the ninth. Luke Roscom comes through. Wareham trails by two. The payoff pitch to Martellini. Line drive into center field. The base hit. One run will score. Lockhart being waved around third. He will score. We got a tie ball game in the ninth. Gian Martellini comes through in a big way against his former team. Here is that one, too. This one's going to be smoked out towards left center field. A long run out there for Jeremy Idens, and he's going to reach over the wall. Oh, my goodness, he made the catch. Jeremy Idens just took a home run away from J.J. Blade, reaching over the wall here at left field in Eldridge Park. Swung on, drilled into deep right field at the track, at the wall, and it's gone. A walk-off home run for the Gateman. Austin Shenton wins it for Wareham. Skied into deep right field. Collins going back on it, reaches up. He made the catch! Isaac Collins took away a home run from Tristan English! Oh my goodness, Isaac Collins. For the runner there, Michael Bush, the pitch home. Fastball swung on and missed, and the Gatemen win their eighth title and won for the first time since 2012. The Wareham Gatemen are kings of the Cape Cod Baseball League. It's time for Wareham Gateman Baseball, and here for the call are Gabe Genovese and Jonah Carr. Game two of a double dip here from Wareham on Father's Day. The Wareham Gateman took game one, 5 nothing against Chatham, looking for a doubleheader sweep here on this Sunday afternoon. Gabe Genovese, Jonah Carp with you. Excited to bring you some baseball. Two seven-inning games, Wareham Gateman looking good both on the pitching side and the hitting side in game number one, looking to be equally as good or better here in game two. Tyler Dones, Kaden Polkovich, Jamal Ogin leading things off for the Chatham Anglers here in the second game. And it was a fantastic game one win for Wareham. 5 nothing, first shutout of the season for the Gateman. The offense did their job once again. Five runs on ten hits. Ian Bedell out of Missouri was marvelous in game one. Four and two-thirds innings pitched, just three hits given up, no runs. A couple of walks, three strikeouts, and then Trent Palmer did his job as well. Two and a third innings pitched, no runs, three hits, one walk given up, but five Ks. Ian Bedell making his first start of the season for Wareham. He was exceptional. Brendan Salucci. Getting the start in game number two. His first start of the season for the Gateman. Wareham in their home white uniforms, all white. Red numbering, trimmed in navy blue. The Chatham Anglers in their blue tops, bright blue tops, gray bottoms, trimmed in blue, white numbering. And that bright red logo. Tyler Dones, Kaden Polkovich, Jamal Ogin, the three do up. Tyler Dones didn't get the nod in game one, but he's leading things off in game two. Brendan Salucci, first pitch as a Wareham Gateman. Jonah Carp, Gabe Genovese with you. Pleasure to be your eyes and ears for the broadcast. The pitch, fastball, low and away. We're underway, one ball and no strikes. A 5-0 victory for Wareham in the first game. They're now on a two-game win streak. 3-1-1 one one this season. The 1-0. Taken over the outside corner. One ball and one strike. 
Tyler Doan's playing second base for the Chatham Anglers, wearing number 47, batting from the right side. Salucci, a left-handed pitcher. A Pennsylvania native. The pitch. Fastball. In and out of the glove of Guan Garena. Skips all the way to the backstop. Two balls and one strike. Guan Garena behind the dish for game two. It was Andrew Thomas getting his first start behind the plate. Thomas out of the lineup for game two. Winkler over at the hot corner. Stevens back at short. The pitch, fastball, outside, three and one. Baker back at second base. And Jacob Teeter at first. From left to right in the outfield, Mike Antico, Braden Ward, and Matt Rudick. Rudick was the center fielder in the first game, moving over to right field. Braden Ward getting the start in center field. Light shining bright. 6.45 was the first pitch. Fastball over the outer half for strike two, a 3-2 count. Gray leaden skies overhead. Ominous looking skies. Rain in the forecast. So far, it's held off. The payoff. Fastball upstairs and outside. Tyler Dones works a leadoff walk to begin game number two. Not the start. You were looking for if you're Salucci, but just one batter. And again, the first batter he's faced all summer. Let's see how long it takes him to settle into a groove. That'll bring up Caden Polkovich. Led things off for the Anglers in the first game. Comes to bat with the runner at first. First pitch. Sits upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Nobody out. No score. Just getting underway in a quick mound meeting between the catcher, Guan Garena, and the manager, Jerry Weinstein. Weinstein with his second stint in Wareham. First time back in a few years. Missed last season's postseason dominance and Cape League title. It was a 2 nothing sweep Wareham versus Chatham to win the championship. Tyler Dones caught in a rundown between first and second. Caught napping on the base paths. And Steven slaps on the tag for the first out. So no harm done after that leadoff walk. Tyler Dones retired on the base paths for the first out. Count still one ball and no strikes to Kaden Polkovich. That's one way to make up for the leadoff walk. The pitch. Fastball darts over the outer half, one and one. Well, it came immediately after Jerry Weinstein retreated back to the dugout. Perhaps that was part of the conversation. The one one. Fastball over the glove of Guan Garena. Polkovich watch it, sit, watches it sit high and sail to the backstop. Two balls and one strike. Nobody on base now, one away. Top of the first inning, no score. Two and one the count. The pitch. Fastball misses the outside corner. Three balls and one strike. Polkovich went one for two in game one. Reached base twice. Singled and walked. The pitch. Fastball up and away. Ball four. Two straight walks from Brendan Salucci to begin his outing. Jamal Ogin will get the third at bat of this inning. One away. Salucci missing high and wide consistently against the right-handed batters. Exactly what I was going to say. High and out. And those fastballs missing. First pitch to Ogin sits low and away. One ball and no strikes. Salucci from Wincott, Pennsylvania. Six foot four, 205 pounds. Left-handed pitcher. Rising junior at Tulane. The pitch. Fastball up and away. Two balls and no strikes. Perhaps some jitters from Brendan Salucci. Getting his first start, his first mound appearance. This one's cracked in the air. Deep to left center field. Antico going back toward the wall. Ward looking up. That ball is gone. Jamal Ogin cracks the two-run shot.
and it's 2-0 Anglers. Gein was our player to watch in our pregame today. And after a one for four day in game one, he shows why he's that type of player. He came into today a 353 hitter with three RBIs and now make it five RBIs with the two run bomb. Paxton Wallace, the new batter. First pitch, fastball up and away, one ball and no strikes. Well, Jamal Ogin had himself a season, 281, five homers, 29 RBIs. The 1-0. Fastball up and in, 2-0. But it was the walk so far in the Cape League that has caught everybody's attention. 2-0. On the outside corner, 2-1. Ogin had drawn at least one walk in each of the first five games for the Anglers. That streak came to an end in game one. The pitch on the inside corner, strike two. Two balls, two strikes, nobody on base, two runs home in the inning, one away in the top of the first. Two nothing A's. Two and two the count. The pitch. On the inside corner, strike three called. First strike out of the day for Brendan Salucci. Gets Paxton Wallace looking two away. Salucci going to the off-speed pitch. Buckle the knees of Wallace. Nobody on base, now two out. Brady Smith, the new batter. Smith got in that bat in the first game. Slaps... Uh, Line drive into right field, cut off by Rudick, plays it on a couple hops, fires it back into second. And Brady Smith rounds first and stops there with a two-out single. Smith taking one the other way. Working on some short sleep. Came in last night during the victory for Chatham. Standing at first base, Trenis Ozuna, the new batter. Runner at first, two away. 2-0 Chatham. And now Brady Smith is caught in a rundown. Second time in this inning alone, deja vu. Smith is tagged out by Chad Stevens to end the inning. Boy, poor base running by the Anglers in the top of the first. But they lead 2-0. Two runs coming home in the top of the first inning. Gateman, look to respond when we return. Stick around on the Gateman Baseball Network. Earn a bachelor's or master's degree, complete a certificate, or take a single course through the Division of Continuing Education and Graduate Studies at Curry College. Classes run days, evenings, and weekends in Milton and Plymouth. To learn more about programs in business, criminal justice, education, nursing, and more, visit curry.edu. Clobbered high and deep to right center field, and this one is gone, a home run. That home run's brought to you by Eastern Propane and Oil, another scholarship for a deserving youth. Eastern Propane and Oil, we're in your neighborhood. After the game, visit El Mariachi on Main Street for the best Mexican food in Wareham. The cantina provides a delicious late night snack accompanied by fun cocktails. The Wareham Gateman would like to thank Franklin Sports for their sponsorship of the Cape Cod Baseball League. Franklin is yet again proud to be the official batting glove of the Cape Cod Baseball League. Throughout the summer, all the Cape League teams are wearing their own custom team batting gloves courtesy of Franklin Sports. To order your favorite team's design or to create your own, visit franklinsports.com slash custom, enter code CCBL20 for 20% off your purchase. From Cape Cod to the major leagues, only the best hitters in baseball wear Franklin gloves. Come as you are, sit down, and relax at the Deck of the Gateway Tavern. Enjoy the view while exploring their extensive food and drink menus for the ideal Cape Cod dining experience. Gateway Tavern, the official helmet sponsor of the Wareham Gateman. Joanne Stevenson and Miss Real Estate, a double play when it comes to selling or buying a home. With 19 years of experience in residential real estate and ranked number one globally, they are sure to help you with all of your hopes and dreams. William Ravis Real Estate, the official real estate company for the Boston Red Sox, and Joanne Stevenson, your hometown agent, proudly support the Wareham Gateman. 
Located on the Cape Cod Canal, Keystone Place at Buzzards Bay is the area's newest rental independent living, assisted living, and memory care community. With some of the area's largest apartments and an ultra-inclusive monthly service package, Keystone Place is a life-fulfilling retirement community unlike any other. Discover Keystone Place, the best option in Cape Cod. Big Chatham as we enter the bottom of the first inning. Matt Rudick, Darren Baker, Jacob Teeter. The three Gatemen do up. Immediately, Rudick shows bunt, pulls it back, takes a pitch outside. One ball and no strikes. Rud Rudick out in right field for the second game. Darren Baker playing second base. Jacob Teeter over at first. Not a lot of changes from game one. Rudick is one of them. Pitch on the inner half. Count evens up, one and one. Rudick led off, but was playing center field. Moves over to right field with Braden Ward, who's batting ninth, playing center field in the second game. Gateman in an early 2-0 hole. Left on left matchup. Pitch upstairs, two balls and one strike. Hayden King, the pitcher, for Chatham. Making his second appearance with the A's this summer. California native. Goes to UNLV. Transferred from USF. Swing and a miss, two and two. His uncle Mark played baseball at Cal before then playing in the pros for the Expos. Played in the organization, never made it to the bigs. The pitch from King sits inside, three and two. King threw three perfect innings versus Kotuit back on Tuesday. Didn't play this past season for UNLV. Six foot two, 215 pounds, a left handed pitcher. Nobody on, nobody out, the payoff. Slaps foul behind home plate. We'll do it again. The lineup in game two for the Gatemen, Matt Rudick, Darren Baker, Jacob Teeter, Adrian Del Castillo batting cleanup, Cam Guangarena behind him, Mike Antigo batting sixth, Chad Stevens, Jack Winkler, and then Braden Ward rounding out the batting order. 2-0 Chatham, the 3-2. Lifted foul again and out of play. Count holds. With that loss in game one, Chatham falls to four and two on the season. Their pitching has been pretty darn impressive all, all year. Their first five games. The three, two. Taken up and in, ball four. Just like the last half inning, this inning starts with the leadoff walk. I 100% agree with you on, on that Chatham pitching point. In four their first five or in their first four wins, so they started the season four and one in their four wins, all it's taken is five runs each game. The Chatham pitching staff has not allowed more than five runs all year as their loss Baker squares to bunt, takes a pitch outside. Their loss was one nothing to Falmouth. And then in game one of this doubleheader, it was a 5 nothing win for the Gatemen. So still haven't allowed more than five. Runner at first base, 1-0 the count. Throw back to first. Rudick back to the bag. Count holds at one ball and no strikes. In the 7-3 win yesterday against YD, Mason Hazelwood pitched an immaculate inning in the seventh inning. The 1-0, taken for a strike on the outer corner, 1-1. One one. Jacob Teeter in the on-deck circle. Wind blowing from right to left. Not very strongly, but a noticeable gust. Matt Rudick back to the bag with the throw not in time. Up 
I love looking at the list of alumni that have come through some of these organizations. Flaps foul, one and two. Chatham is at the top of that list. Alumni including Chris Bryant, Thurman Munson, Jeff Bagwell, Matt Harvey, Todd, Todd Frazier, Evan Longoria. What a list. Generations. Throw back to first. Rudick back to the bag. And you have Thurman Munson, who played in the 60s. He played for Chatham in the 60s. Our producer trying to correct me. I know what I'm talking about. Swing and a miss. Darren Baker goes down on strikes. First out. The first baseman, number 22, Jacob Peter from Florida Southern. Jacob Teeter, the new batter with a man on first. One away. Two nothing A's. King looks over at first base. First pitch fouled off. Count nothing and one. Jacob Teeter from Melbourne, Florida. Rising junior at Florida Southern College. Batted 316 with seven homers, 51 RBIs this past season. A big left handed bat, six foot six, 230 pounds. Throw back to first, Rudick back. Count holds at nothing and one. Walked more times than he struck out this past season. 33 walks, 31 strikeouts, an on base percentage of 417. Rudick takes off, pitch down in the dirt, stopped by Smith, but he doesn't come up throwing. Rudick swipes the bag with one away, one and one in the count. Rudick got a good jump there. Even if there was a throw, I think he would have been safe. But you said it pitched low and not even a throw down to second. A runner in scoring position already for the Gaten. Adrian Del Castillo on deck. Rudick with about four or five steps off the second base back. One and one still to count to Jacob Teeter. The pitch. Taken over the outer third, one and two. Eight Chatham alumni were taken in the first four rounds of this past draft. Five Gatemen taken in the first four rounds. Pitch, low and away, two balls and two strikes. Three Gatemen were taken in the first round. Four Anglers were taken in the first round. That's pretty good. Yeah, you'll take that. Two and two the count, one away, runner at second. Two nothing Chatham. The pitch, taken just a little bit outside. Three and two. Rudick at second base, Adrian Del Castillo in the on deck circle. Full count for the second time in three batters. The pitch popped up in the air into foul ground along the right side. Ogeen drifting over, drifting back, losing it, and dropping it. Ogeen looked like he had it lined up. The wind not blowing all that strong, but the last second losing that pop-up, and Jacob Teeter will live to see another pitch. Second life for Teeter, who's still looking for his first hit with the Gateman after... Going 0 for 3 with a walk in game 1. He's now 0 for 10 with two walks. He did pick up an RBI on a ground out in game 1 as well. 3 and 2, the count remains with one away in the bottom of the first. King steps off the rubber. Paying a lot of attention to Matt Rudick over at second base. A lot of games being played today around the Cape League. The pitch, lifted in the air, straight away center field. Polkovich 
First going back, now coming in, and he stays with it for the second out. Matt Rudick stays at second base. Adrian Del Castillo, the new batter. Taking a look around the league, Orleans taking down Bourne earlier today. 9-0 the score. Harwich tweaking out a victory against Falmouth, 1-0. YD over Cotuit, 7-2. Brewster over Hyannis, 11-5. First pitch upstairs to Adrian Del Castillo. One ball, no strikes. And with Brewster's victory, the Harbor Hawks are still winless this season. That would make them 0-4. Oh, 0-4-1. Four, oh, four one. One. The 1-0 one -oh taken downstairs, 2-0. Oh. Harwich already completed their doubleheader. Sweeping Falmouth, second game, final score, 7-1. This game is behind compared to all the others. Kotuit over YD, 9-7. Pitch low and away, 3-0. That game in the top of the seventh. Brewster over Hyannis in the bottom of the sixth, 9-4. Tie ball game in Bourne, 1-1 against Orleans, bottom of the fifth. 2-0 here, bottom of the first. The pitch, upstairs, ball four. Four-pitch walk to Adrian Del Castillo to put runners on first and second with two away. And Cotuit in the west, Chatham in the east, both entered the day 4-1, tied atop the league. They both lost their first games of the doubleheader. Of course, Wareham beating Chatham. YD beat Cotuit in game one. Two, it looks like they're about to bounce back with a victory up 9-7 in the seventh. A sweep for Wareham today would be very beneficial in the standings. Pitch upstairs. All right, pitch just catching the top of the strike zone. Count nothing in one. Cam Guangarena, the new batter. Two on, two away. 0-1 oh, the count. The pitch. On the inside corner, nothing in two. Cam Guangarena batting fifth for Wareham in the second game. Playing catcher. He was the DH in the first game. Batted cleanup. Went one for three, reached base twice with a single and a walk. The 0-2. Taken low and away, one ball and two strikes. Matt Rudick off second base. Adrian Del Castillo off first. They both walked. One and two the count. The pitch. Lifted foul behind home plate. And out of play. Count holds at one and two. Jonah Karp, Gabe Genovese, Addison Van Patten with you. Thanks for spending your Sunday night with us. Right here on the Gateman Baseball Network. One and two, the count remains. The pitch. Slapped on the ground, a broken back grounder. Charging in Wallace, fires to first in time. And that's how the first inning comes to an end. The third baseman, Wallace, making a nice play. Retiring Cam Guangarena to end the first inning. And King works around two walks. Gateman come up empty. No runs, no hits. Two left on at the end of one. 2-0 Chatham. We'll be right back. Located on Route 6 right here in Wareham, Cool Cone is a Cape Cod institution like no other. From smooth soft serve to fresh golden seafood, there's something for everyone. With a chocolate dipped cone in one hand and a putter in the other, enjoy a cold treat and a round of mini golf at your local favorite, Cool Cone. The law firm of Lang, Exafaris, and Bullard, providing families and businesses in the greater New Bedford community with legal services for 40 years. We look forward to serving you. 
For an appointment, call 508-992-1270. We invite you to learn more about the law firm of Lang, Exifaris, and Bullard by visiting our website, lxblaw.com. Legacy Insurance Agency at 213 Main Street here in Wareham can offer you coverage for all your insurance needs. We have the bundle discounts, the accident forgiveness, the vanishing deductible, no loss, etc. But unlike those gimmick companies, we can quote you with multiple carriers. So forget the lizard and price tool and come talk to a professional. We'll help you find what's right for you. Got legal trouble? Attorney Mark Deshays is here to help the greater New Bedford area with real estate and business law, estate planning, and probate. Visit him today. Top of the second inning. 2 nothing Chatham over Wareham. Second game of the doubleheader. Brennis Ozuna, Aiden Fernandez, Jorge Arenas. Two up against Brendan Salucci. Left on right matchup, first pitch from Salucci. Cut on a miss, count nothing and one. Brennis Ozuna in the first game, batted ninth, went one for three with two strikeouts. The 0-1. Fastball in at the knees, but taken inside. One ball and one strike. Ozuna playing right field in both games. Salucci out of the windup, the pitch. Taken low and away. Two balls and one strike. And Salucci's had to work his way back and counts a lot here early in this game. The 2-1. Ground ball left side of the infield, backhanded by the shortstop. Stevens goes to first in time. Strong throw to retire Ozuna, one away. Really strong throw from Stevens across the diamond there. Took that on a hop, took it backhanded, or backhanded, excuse me. And I don't know if he maybe lost grip a little bit, but it looked like he took a little longer than he wanted to and had to fire it quickly. Got the job done. Adrian Fernandez It's a new batter. First pitch. Skips in the dirt at the feet of Fernandez and off the glove of Guangarena. No harm, no foul. Nobody on base. One ball, no strikes. Nobody on. One away. Top of the second inning. Two nothing. Gateman trail. The one up. Check swing. Taken low. Strike called. One and one. Michael Finn, the home plate umpire. The one one. Waved at and missed the fastball. One and two. Aiden Fernandez, the designated hitter for the Anglers here in the second game. Played left field in the first game, went 0 for 3. Ground out, strikeout, pop out. Behind the count, one ball and two strikes. The pitch skips in the dirt, stopped by Guangarena, 2 and 2. That was close to hitting Fernandez there. He kind of skewed it out of the way at the last second. Fernandez batted eighth in the first game, batting seventh. Jorge Arenas batting eighth, playing shortstop. Waiting on deck. The 2-2. Two -two. Fernandez swings and just gets a piece of it. Count holds at two balls and two strikes. Aiden Fernandez from Florida. Rising sophomore at Florida International University. Batted just a buck 85 with five homers this past season at FIU. The 2 2. Chopped on the ground left side of the infield. Another play for the shortstop. Stevens backs handed, fires to first, this time under the glove of Teeter. Skips into the dugout. But Fernandez holds at first base. Backed up by Salucci. Tough play for Stevens over at short. And it's going to go down as an infield single. That ball poked into the 
into the hole on the left side of the infield. Stevens did a good job ranging over, but just couldn't come up with a good throw. First pitch taken on the outside corner, strike one to Jorge Arenas. And the hit is given because the ruling is Fernandez would have been safe even if Teeter scooped that ball out of the dirt. Would have been close. Would have been close. We'll never know. The pitch. Chopped foul along the third baseline. Salucci quickly ahead, nothing in two. Vincenzo Bologna on deck. Aiden Fernandez at first, one away, top of the second inning. Throw back to first, and the throw skips into foul ground, sails all the way to the wall. Fernandez takes off, makes it safely to second base without another throw. Wild throw from Salucci, who picked off two base runners in the first inning. Couldn't connect with Teeter on that one. And it was a decent move once again, but you said it, throw just got away from him and Chatham with another runner in scoring position already up 2 nothing. Takes away the double play opportunity. Count holds at nothing in two to arenas. Here's the pitch. Fastball low and away, one ball and two strikes. Jorge Arenas playing short, batting eighth for the Anglers in the second game. Didn't take an at-bat in the first game. Rising Junior at Stetson. 286 batting average, four homers, 38 RBIs this year. The one-two. Popped up in the air into foul ground on the right side. The catcher, Guan Garena, throwing away his face mask, making the catch above his helmet as the runner holds at second base. Second out. Good play by Guan Garena. Kept ranging and ranging over down that first base line. Finally settled under it at the last second. Still had to kind of lean back to make the catch, but he was in charge the whole time, and he was vocal about it. So in steps the number nine batter, Vincenzo Bologna. Wearing number 50. Out in left field tonight. First pitch. Taken upstairs, a fastball. One ball and no strikes. Bologna from California, six foot three, 210 pounds. Right-handed bat, rising junior at San Juan Joaquin Delta College. Swings right through a fastball, one and one. Comes to bat with the runner at second base and two away in the top of the second inning. Anglers with the early lead on top, two nothing. Two-run homer off the bat of Jamal Ogin, the difference in this game. Anglers looking for the doubleheader split, the pitch. Taken just a little bit low and outside. Two balls and one strike. Chatham and Wareham met four times in the regular season last year. Wareham got all four victories. Taken over the outer corner, two and two. Met six times in total including the two in the championship series. Wareham got W's in both of those games. 6-0 against Chatham last year. The 2-2. Ground ball left side down the third baseline. Picked up by Winkler, the third baseman. Long throw to first. Gets there in time. That retires Bologna for the third out. Anglers leave one stranded in the top of the second inning. No runs on a hit and one man left. After one and a half, it's 2-0 Chatham. We'll be right back. Struggling with changes in mood, sleep, stress, or a sense of hopelessness? Finding it hard to be the man you want to be? Get the information and tools you need for mental, emotional, and relationship health at massmen.org. Courage starts with the first step. Get Gateman gear. Check out the latest styles and colors of your favorite Gateman apparel. Also in stock, a large selection of Cape League items, including tickets to the All-Star Game. Test your pitching speed and pick up a souvenir ball all at our merchandise booth. The Mezzaluna Restaurant is a family-run Italian restaurant celebrating 80 years in business. Located on Main Street in Buzzards Bay, Mezzaluna specializes in Italian cuisine, a lunch menu that's the best deal in town, and serving some of Cape Cod's famous prime rib every Wednesday and Saturday. Come enjoy the feast at Mezzaluna, the Italian family restaurant. Does your insurance agent know you by name? 
analyze your stats and help you with your game plan? If the answer is no, then it's time to draft Morse Insurance. Their local team will get to know you, assess your risk, and develop a strategy to protect your home, auto, or business. Visit us online at morseins.com. Hashtag Morse, of course, has your back. Northeast Maritime Institute's College of Maritime Science is a proud sponsor of the Wareham Gateman. If you're looking for a career at sea, look to NMI's program of education, adventure, and employment on northeastmaritime.com, America's premier two-year maritime college. Office Technology Group is a southeastern Massachusetts source for advanced digital copiers, printers, and document solutions. From Toshiba to Epson and everything in between, they've got you covered. Shop now at otgne.com. Large enough to serve, small enough to care. Mike Antico will lead things off for Wareham, trailing 2 nothing in the bottom of the second inning. Jonah Carp, Gabe Genovese back with you. First pitch from King, grounded back over the mound toward the middle of the diamond and through into center field for a base hit. Mike Antico leading things off on the first pitch he sees in the bottom of the second with a single. And Antico's kind of had an up and down beginning to this season. He was just one for 12 to start the year. Then he went three for five yesterday to bring his average up to 235. Then 0 for 2 with the walk in game one, but he singles here to lead off the second. First hit of the day, well, in game two for Wareham. That'll bring up Chad Stevens with a runner at first. First pitch, Stevens squares to Bunt, lays a beauty down the third baseline, pass King on the mound, goes to second with it, and Antico gets back to the bag, throws skips into center field, Antico goes all the way to third base, and Stevens moves up to second. What a sequence for Wareham. And now there's two in scoring position on two pitches and nobody out. Wow. So Stevens lays down a gorgeous bunt on the third base side of the mound. And instead of just letting Pax Paxton Wallace, the third baseman, take it, Hayden King kind of dove, I guess, and gloved that ball and went to throw to first, realized he had no play. So it was a bunt single for Stevens. And then Antico had rounded second base, so he fired to second, and I think that actually hit Antico and trickled into center field. Antico takes third, Stevens takes second. Winkler, the new batter, first pitch to Jack Winkler, sits outside, one ball, no strikes. Antico now at third, Stevens at second. Bunt single, and then error on the throw, but aggressive base running for Wareham. The pitch, waved at and missed, strike one. Jack Winkler got the late start in game one. Played third base, back at third, batting eighth in the second game. Tying run at second, go ahead run at the plate. The pitch, laced foul along the right field line, one and two. Winkler went 0 for 3 in the first game. With a ground out, a pop out, and a strikeout. Batted 8th in the first game as well. Looks to snap that 0 for Skid. And cash in here for the Gateman. The 1 2. Taken inside and low. Two balls and two strikes. That's a good hold from Winkler. That pitch broke down late. I believe that, believe that was King's curveball. Winkler was able to hold off. It, the pitch stayed at the, at the knees for a little while and then dropped in the dirt. Two and two the count now to the third baseman. The pitch from King. Broken bat, flare. Ground ball, right side of the infield, scooped up by Dones, the second baseman. Run comes home, and Jack Winkler picks up an RBI as Chad Stevens moves over to third base, and the Gateman cut the lead to one. And Winkler does his job there. Pitch inside, he kind of had to fist it out towards second base. You said it, he broke his bat in the process, but ground ball slow enough, and... 
made it all the way out to second. I guess my point is the pitcher didn't have a play, and the run scored easily. Stevens now at third base, one away in the inning. First pitch to Braden Ward. He lays a drag bunt down the first base line, but it rolls foul. Nothing in one. Braden Ward didn't play in the first game, batting ninth, and out in center field here in the second game. Ward actually listed as an infielder on our rosters, native of California and a rising junior at the University of Washington, batted 321 this past season with a homer. Stevens over at third, the pitch. High chopper, left side of the infield, picked up near the waist by Arenas, the shortstop. Throws over to first in time to retire Braden Ward, but another run comes home for the Gateman, and we're knotted up at two. So after second and third, nobody out. Two straight RBI grind outs, ties the game. And the rain that we have been, well, we're made aware of, we saw coming, and we were hoping would hold off for a little longer, has not held off. It is, it's coming down at a decent pace here at Spline Field. Still playing baseball, Matt Rudick takes the first pitch upstairs. One ball and no strikes. I wonder what a, a complete game would be in a seven-inning doubleheader game. In a seven-inning game. Probably still five innings, right? As Rudick swings through a high fastball, one and one. In a seven-inning game, if, if the Gateman are winning, it'd be four and a half. Okay the Gateman wouldn't have to bat, bat in the bottom half of the inning. The 1-1. One, one. Fouled straight back. One ball and two strikes. But, for example, if we were to stay tied 2-2, two to two, then five innings is your complete game. One ball, two strikes to count to Rudick. Two away, nobody on base. 2-2 two, two the score. Darren Baker on deck. Rudick walked in his first and only plate appearance. The pitch, taken low and away. Two balls and two strikes. The fans well prepared here. There was rain in the forecast, so a lot of them brought ponchos and umbrellas and rain jackets and everything of that variety. The Chatham broadcast booth bringing a tarp, making a makeshift tent. Pitch taken low and away, three and two. So everyone prepared for this doubleheader. The Wareham faithful sticking around despite the rain. Although every minute, the rain gets harder and harder. Three and two the count to the leadoff man, Matt Rudick. Two away, nobody on base. The payoff. Taken low and away, ball four. Two plate appearances, two walks for Matt Rudick. And the Gatemen have a base runner with two away. And every single hitter in this Gateman lineup in the second inning has delivered a, a, a meaningful at that. I'm trying to think of the word I want to use. It's not meaningful. Quality? It's, it's a quality. <laughs> a quality at bat. First pitch to Darren Baker taken upstairs, ball one. Wow, I just didn't know English for a second. Um. But the single from Manteca, the button single from Stevens, and then even the ground outs from Winkler and Ward. RBIs on each of them to tie it at two, and now a walk from Rudick. That ever happened to you? That I forget English? Yes. All the time. 1-0 <laughs> <laughs> oh the count to Darren Baker. Runner at first with two away. The pitch. Taken over the outer corner, 1-1. One one. We should keep a, thes a thesaurus. Somewhere in the broadcast booth. Two to the score. Matt Rudick at first. Fastball high. Two balls and one strike. Rain continues to pour down. Not letting up. Forcing us to move around equipment. The pitch. Lifted foul behind home plate. Two and two.
two away in the bottom of the second inning. Kotuit and YD now tied at nine in the bottom of the seventh. The pitch. Lifted foul along the left side. Out of play again. We'll do it again at two and two. So that's a good battle in game two of their doubleheader. Game one, YD took a 7-2 victory. Wonder if it's raining there. The pitch. Lifted foul again. And we'll do it again. Two and two. Baker just fighting and fighting and fighting. He's probably the Wareham player I've been most impressed with through five games. Just the way he's able to battle and put the bat on the ball consistently. Two and two the count. Two away. Two to the score. Fouled away. Again, hits in all five games thus far for Baker. This being game number six. Jacob Teeter on deck. And two three-hit games for Baker already this season. The multi-hit machine. Over one today. 2-2 two -two the score. 2-2 two -two the count. Two away. Slapped on the ground. Left side under the glove of Wallace, the third baseman, into left field. Baker pulls in at first. Rudick stops at second. And the Gatemen have tables set for Jacob Teeter with two away. And that's exactly what we were just talking about, his ability to fight off pitches and just stay alive in the at-bat and just poke one the other way there. That ball was probably low and away. Probably would have been ball three. But with two strikes, he didn't want to take a chance. And he now has a hit in all six games for Wareham. Jacob Teeter steps into the batter's box with two on. Rudick at second, Baker at first. First pitch to Teeter, swings, lines it off the glove of Arenas and into center field. Matt Rudick rounds third, throw goes into third. Rudick comes home to score, throw off line. Baker coming home to score, and Teeter stops at second base. Two more runs home in the inning for Wareham, and they're on top, 4-2. Wow. What a sequence there, and what a heads-up play by Darren Baker. The ball goes off the glove of the shortstop, Arenas, which allows Rudick to score easily. But Baker, again, he started that play on first. Of course, he reaches second on the original hit that went off the glove of Arenas, and then he decides to take third as Rudick went home. And the throw to third was a little offline. And then as soon as that ball went off the glove of the third baseman, Wallace, Baker sprinted home and scored easily. Darren Baker going first to home. Showing off his speed. Stoppage of play in a 4-2 game. Wareham on top. Bottom of the second, still two away. Four runs home in the inning. And some pause in animation. Rain still pouring down. Harder and harder with every minute. And the official ruling on that is a two RBI single for Teeter. And he moves to third, or moves to second, excuse me, on the throw to third. Fourth hit of the inning. Mike Antico, Chad Stevens, each with singles. To begin the bottom of the second. Jorge Arenas was playing shortstop, now playing third. Yeah, on that play, third baseman Wallace, I don't know if that ball ended up hitting him in the face or he just took an awkward fall. But he gets pulled from this game as I think that ball nicked his glove and then hit him in the head Attention, before it trickled away. Shortstop, number 49, ben Ramirez. So Ben Ramirez moves over to shortstop. 
didn't start the second game. Arenas going over to third. And Wallace exiting. The batter is the designated hitter, number seven, Adrian Del Castillo from Miami. Adrian Del Castillo, the new batter. Runner at second. Four runs home in the inning. First pitch over the outer corner, nothing and one. Del Castillo walked in the first inning. One of three walks for King so far. Cam Guangarena on deck. Seven Gatemen have come to bat in this inning. The pitch. Line drive in the air. Hard hit over the glove of Dones. The second baseman drops into right field for a base hit. Adrian Del Castillo comes up big. Stops at first with an RBI single as Jacob Teeter comes home to score. Fifth run of the inning. Another big inning on offense for the Wareham Gateman. 5-2 over Chatham. Five runs on five hits. And even the two outs were RBI ground outs for Wareham in this inning. And then Rudick walked. Wow. That's going to be it for Hayden King. Pitching change here in Wareham, Massachusetts. 5-2. Gateman on top. Five runs home in the inning. Five hits in the inning. Three straight hits, and Hayden King exits. Pitching change brought to you by Bay Point Club. We'll be right back. Stick around. Shop from home year-round on Gateman.org. You can customize your Gateman gear from any device, anywhere. We offer a large selection of apparel and unique gifts 24-7, 365 days a year. Hard to find sizes, colors, and styles. Youth clinic registration also available. Visit us today and remember us for holiday gifts at Gateman.org. Gateman Baseball is officially sponsored by Robertson's GMC, the Truck Professionals. Located just two miles away on Cranberry Highway, Robertson's GMC, we are professional grade, power like a pro. Need physical therapy? Select Physical Therapy works directly with you and your physician to create a plan of care that meets your goals and needs with six locations on Cape Cod and more across the country. Select Physical Therapy is the official provider of athletic training for the Wareham Gateman. Soft as a Grape has 10 retail locations on Cape Cod. So even when you're cheering on your Gateman at any away games, stop into a Soft as a Grape store for the best Cape Cod products. No trip to the Cape is complete without a trip to Soft as a Grape. South Coast Health Operators of Charlton Memorial, St. Luke's, and Toby Hospitals delivers an unmatched combination of clinical excellence with a personal touch. They are proud to serve as Southeastern Massachusetts and Rhode Island's only not-for-profit health system as well as the region's largest employer, South Coast Healthcare, plus something more. Whether you're brewing a lager or an ale, Stone Path Malt has got you covered. Stone Path Malt, the local provider of quality malt for all your favorite New England craft breweries, is right here in Wareham. For your next night out, stop by their new tap room. Village Signs of Mattapoisett. They do it all, from logo design, trucks and buildings, to boats. Village Signs has proudly served southern New England for over 35 years. Visit them at villagesignsinc.com for all your signage needs. Five runs home in this inning. Austin Vernon looks to stop the bleeding. Runner at first base. Three straight hits for the Gateman. First pitch upstairs. One ball, no strikes to Cam Guangarena. See, that's a nice orange bat. That is a nice orange bat. It's a three-tone bat. Don't see that too often. The pitch taken upstairs. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Rain's still coming down here in Wareham. Austin Vernon from Durham, North Carolina goes to NCCU, North Carolina Central University. Pitched 44 innings this past season, 57 strikeouts in those 44 innings. The pitch popped up in the air, but foul behind home plate, 2 and 1. Guangarena 0 for 1, grounded out to third to end the first. Leaving two stranded for Wareham in the first inning. 
Gateman trailed by two, trailed two nothing. Now lead by three, cut and a miss, two and two. Vernon, a rising junior. His brother Andrew also played at NCCU. 28th round pick by Milwaukee three years ago, 2016, Major League Baseball draft. Adrian Del Castillo at first base. Two and two the count. Five to the score. Two away. Pitch outside. Three and two. Mike Antico would be next. He got the train moving here in the second inning. Singled and scored. This would feel like a long inning had yesterday not included a nine-run inning. Runner takes off, lifted in the air, fairly deep out to straightaway center field. Pokovic going back, still back. He's on the run, and it's over his head. Adrian Del Castillo, round second, now rounding third. He's going to come home to score. Throw goes in late to third base. A dive made by Cam Guangarena, but he's out. Strong throw from the outfield to nab Cam Guangarena on the base paths. But he picks up another RBI. What's new for Mr. Cam? 6-2 Wareham. Six runs home in the bottom of the second. And Gabe Genovese has your call when we return for the third. Stick around. South Coast Health Operators of Charlton Memorial, St. Luke's, and Toby Hospitals delivers an unmatched combination of clinical excellence with a personal touch. They are proud to serve as Southeastern Massachusetts and Rhode Island's only not-for-profit health system as well as the region's largest employer. South Coast Healthcare, plus something more. Whether you're brewing a lager or an ale, Stone Path Malt has got you covered. Stone Path Malt, the local provider of quality malt for all your favorite New England craft breweries, is right here in Wareham. For your next night out, stop by their new tap room. Village Signs of Mattapoisett. They do it all, from logo design, trucks and buildings, to boats. Village Signs has proudly served Southern New England for over 35 years. Visit them at villagesignsinc.com for all your signage needs. The Gateman would like to thank Wareham Country Market for helping to feed the Gateman players and staff after games. They are located about a quarter of a mile from the field on Route 6, offering a convenience store, a Dunkin' Donuts, and a deli. Wareham House of Pizza has been serving Wareham and Marion for over 40 years with steak and cheese, pizza, and subs. Located in Shaw's Plaza, head on over for pickup or let them deliver to you. Beat the heat and join us at Waterways, a water experience unlike any other this side of the bridge. Open daily, head over to the water park on Route 28, the Cranberry Highway. Early lead for Chatham. Wareham puts up six in the bottom of the second to take a 6-2 lead. And now it's the top of the order once again for the Anglers. Tyner, Tyler Dona, excuse me, Caden Pol Polkovich, and Jamal O'Gween. Brennan Salucci's day is done on the mound. We have a pitching change brought to you by Bay Point Club for the Gateman. Salucci, two innings pitch, gave up three hits, two runs. Walked a couple of batters, struck out one. And now Garrett Irvin makes his first appearance this season for the Gateman. Irvin, 6'1", 190-pound sophomore, transferring to Arizona in the fall. Comes from Riverside City College in the California Community College Athletic Association. Made 15 starts for Riverside City this season. 10 and 2 with a 2.25 ERA. And I should say Rising Junior going into Arizona this fall. The lefty will face the top of the order. Tyler Dones walks his walked his first time up to lead off this game. Ended up getting Picked off over at first. Well, he got caught in a rundown on a good move by Salucci. And was tagged out in between first and second. First pitch to Dones. Misses just low. 1-0. and Dones playing second base here in game two for Chatham. 1-0 pitch. Fastball low. 2-0. 
Stones did not play in Game 1 for the Anglers. A 5 nothing victory for Wareham. 2-0 pitch, catches the outside corner, 2-1. Irvin, a big deep breath from the windup to 2 1. Fastball high and tight. Three balls and a strike. Doan steps out, stick, steps back in from the right side. The 3 1 pitch catches the inside corner, 3 and 2. The game one victory for Wareham gave the Gateman back-to-back -back wins for the first time in 2019. 3-2 pitch, hard ground ball, foul down the third baseline. We'll do it all over again. Wareham now 3-1-1 one one this season. Still holds second place in the Western Division. Chatham falls to 4-2. and two. They're still first in the East. The 3-2 delivery. Fastball popped up. Shallow right field. Rudick coming on, makes the catch. Right above his right shoulder. One away. The center fielder, number 40, Kaden Polkovich from Oklahoma City. One down, top of the third. Gateman leads 6-2. And in steps Kaden Polkovich. Polkowicz transferring to Oklahoma State in the fall. Played his college ball at Northwest Florida College this past spring. First pitch to him. Breaking ball catches the inside corner. 0-1. Polkowicz hit 273 for Northwest Florida. As he smacks that one into center field, a base hit. First hit off of Irvin today for Chatham. And the fourth hit of the ball game for the Anglers. Just leaving one up in the zone. Polkovic right on the screws, back up the middle. Taking one where the pitch was. In steps Jamal Ogin. And he's the sole reason for the Anglers' runs. A two-run shot in the first inning, his first home run of the summer. Gave Chatham a 2-0 lead at the time. Lefty on righty matchup, the pitch. This one's blooped into center, a base hit. Rounding second sharply is Polkovich, but he halts there. And it's two straight singles for the Anglers. Ogin's now two for two, runners on first and second, one down for Paxton Wallace. Three for his last four, if you go back to game one. It's bringing a hot bat. He was our player to watch in our pregame show today. In case you didn't know, we'll have all pregame shows, all broadcasts, all postgame shows on the Gateman Baseball Network on YouTube all season long. Of course, periodically releasing interviews and videos on Twitter and Facebook as well. First pitch to the lefty Paxton Wallace. Just misses low. We live in a content world. We do. We will try to provide you with all the content your heart desires. Our on-field reporter Addison Van Patten caught up with Cam Guangarena after yesterday's win. 0-1 hammered out to right, pretty deep. Rudick ranges back and makes the catch. Runner from second, Polkovich will tag. He goes to third, two down in the inning. The catcher, number 33, Brady Smith. Wallace probably came about in. 10, 15 feet from a three-run bomb. The wind has pretty much subsided, but the rain playing a factor in in that ball's travel. 100%. Ball just didn't carry like we saw a couple times in game one. Brady Smith steps into center stage. First pitch to him. Foul tipped back. Behind home plate, 0-1. Smith from Florida made his first appearance for the Anglers in game one, a pinch hit at bat in the seventh inning. 
Struck out looking to begin the seventh. Singled his last time up. The 0 1. In the dirt, Guangarena blocks it to his left, and it, a, the runner scores. Polkovich comes home to score. A good read by Caden Polkovich. Guangarena went and barehanded that ball down the third base line and never made the toss because Polkovich's speed would have beat it easily. And the lead is 6 3 for Wareham. Tough play for Guangarena. Did about as all, all as he could, but late covering by Irving. Wild pitch issued to Irving. Count one and one. The pitch to the righty. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Good pitch from Irving, little 12-6 curveball, one and two. So on the wild pitch, Ogin moves up to second. He's in scoring position. Two down, top of the third. 6-3 lead for Wareham, the 1-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him on a fastball high and away. First strikeout for Garrett Irvin. And we end the top of the third. One run on two hits for Chatham. We head to the bottom half of the third inning. 6-3, the Gateman lead over the Anglers. We'll be right back in the Gateman Baseball Network. The 99 Restaurant is a proud sponsor of the Cape Cod Baseball League. Visit them in Centerville, Falmouth, Mashpee, Wareham, or Yarmouth this summer and try some local flavor from the winner of the Cape Times Best Restaurant for Takeout. The 99, always the real deal. The Wareham-based 80 Makepeace Company, founded in 1854, is the world's largest cranberry grower and the largest private property owner in eastern Massachusetts. The company supports organizations like the Wareham Gateman and projects like the Outdoor Cranberry Bog Classroom that you may have passed on your way in. Visit admakepeace.com to learn more. The 2019 Cape League All-Star Game will be played at Eldridge Park, home of the Orleans Firebirds. Mark the date on your calendar, Sunday, July 21st. Game time is 6 p.m., but the gates open at 2. One highlight will be the home run hitting contest. There will also be an autograph session and a large merchandise village with items from many of the teams. Be sure to buy your tickets now right here at the merchandise stand. Tickets are just $5, and part of the proceeds will support our warehouse. Stop by the Ansel S. Gurney House, where you will find a unique shopping and dining experience. Whether shopping for a special occasion or just to treat yourself, you'll find what you're looking for in one of the 11 themed rooms. There's also a cafe serving fresh homemade lunches overlooking the extensive gardens. The Ansel S. Gurney House is located at 403 County Road in Marion. Got legal trouble? Attorney Mark Deshaies. We head to the bottom of the third here at Spillane Field. 6-3, the Wareham Gateman lead over the Chatham Anglers. Mike Antico, Chad Stevens, Jack Winkler, the 6-7-8 hitters due up for Wareham here in the third. First pitch to Antico, low in the dirt, 1-0. and Antico singled his first time up last inning. Led off that six-run, six-hit second inning for the Gateman. The 1-0. Antico shows bunt, pulls it back, takes the ball high, 2-0. Austin Vernon back on the mound. Big right-handed pitcher. Six foot seven, 290 pounds. A deep breath to 2 0. Low and in, 3 0. Mike Antico, now a 200 hitter. Five for 20 to begin the season. Also a couple of walks, a couple of RBIs. I should say a few RBIs. Had three RBIs yesterday. 3 0 catches the outside edge, 3 and 1. Tico in left field once again for Wareham today. 3-1, swing and a miss on a fastball on the outside edge. 3-2. and two. And Tico, a guy coming off his best season of his career. 
Fastball paints the outside corner, strike three. Antico does not like that call. Walks back to the dugout, shaking his head, and there's one away here in the bottom of the third. 6-3, still the Chatham, or excuse me, the Wareham lead. Well, if there's one thing that's been an Achilles heel for Mike Antico this season, it's the strikeout. Struck out earlier today, struck out yesterday. First pitch to Stevens, low below the knees. 1-0. Yeah, Antico, including the two strikeouts today, one in game one, that one there, seven strikeouts already this season. Stevens chops one back up the middle and through in to center field for a base hit. Chad Stevens now two for two after the bunt single in the second inning and a single there. And Tico actually has struck out at least once in each of the first, how many games? Six? This is game number six, my friend. Quick math. And in steps Jack Winkler for Wareham. 0 for 1, but it was an RBI ground out to the second baseman Dones his first time up. Again, Chatham had a 2-0 lead after the first inning on a two-run home run by Ogeen. And then six runs on six hits in the second inning for Wareham. Gives them the 6-2 lead. And after the first couple games in which we were talking about the bats not really going for Wareham. Again, it was just two games, but the Gatemen were hitting 194 in those two games. They've really come alive in the last couple. Throw over to first, diving back safely is Stevens. Suffice to say that uh, the bat's no longer a problem. Not lately, at least. Ten hits in game one of this doubleheader. Already seven hits in this game. And then a 12-5 win yesterday as Winkler swings and misses. Runner going, throw down to second in time. What a throw from Brady Smith. My goodness. You couldn't put it more on the money than that one. Second baseman Dones didn't have to move his glove. Caught that ball and just kept it right there to tag out Stevens. Two away. Wow, that was a, that was a good throw from Brady Smith. He's from Niceville, Florida. 0-1 breaking ball. Misses just inside. It's a nice throw. Pretty throw from the Florida Gator. 1-1. One, one. Down low in the dirt. Gets past Smith. Doesn't matter. No one on base. 2-1. And, and just to finish our thought on the Gateman bats, 10 hits in game one of the doubleheader. 13 hits in the win yesterday. 2-1. Hit pretty well and deep to center, but not deep enough. A couple steps back for the center fielder, Polkovich, and that'll do it. Wareham 6, Chatham 3, we head to the 4th here at Spillane Field. We'll be right back in the Gateman Baseball Network. The 2019 Cape League All-Star Game will be played at Eldridge Park, home of the Orleans Firebirds. Mark the date on your calendar, Sunday, July 21st. Game time is 6 p.m., but the gates open at 2. One highlight will be the home run hitting contest. There will also be an autograph session and a large merchandise village with items from many of the teams. Be sure to buy your tickets now right here at the merchandise stand. Tickets are just $5, and part of the proceeds will support our Wareham Gateman. Stop by the Ansel S. Gurney House, where you will find a unique shopping and dining experience. Whether shopping for a special occasion or just to treat yourself, you'll find what you're looking for in one of the 11 themed rooms. There's also a cafe serving fresh homemade lunches overlooking the extensive gardens. The Ansel S. Gurney House is located at 403 County Road in Marion. Baseball Factory, a proud partner of the Cape League since 1994, holds over a thousand events nationwide for players in both high school and middle school, including three training weeks here in the Cape. Baseball Factory alumni have played on every Division I college program across the nation, with thousands drafted and more than 500 have made it to the majors. Visit BaseballFactory.com to learn how you can build your way to greatness. For a nostalgic Cape Cod vacation experience, head to Bay Motor Inn, where guests are treated like family. Located in the heart of Buzzards Bay Village, this 1950s-style cottage colony still provides you with up-to-date amenities. The Gateman thanked the Bay Motor Inn for their support. First 
pitch of the top of the fourth. Grounded to it short. Stevens gobbles, throws in time. One away. One pitch, one out to Drenis Ozuna, who's now 0 for 2 today. And in step, Saden Fernandez. Jorge Arenas. The third man due up for the Anglers here in the fourth. 6 3, the Wareham lead over the Chatham Anglers. It was a 2 0 Angler lead. Fastball misses inside, 1 0 to Fernandez. And then six runs in the second inning for Wareham. Made it 6 2. Chatham got one back in the third. 1 0 pitch misses low and in, 2 0. And that's where we stand 6 3. Six runs on seven hits in this game for Wareham. Three runs on five hits for Chatham. 2-0 misses low, 3-0 as Garrett Irvin continues to struggle to find the strike zone. Wild pitch led to a run last inning after giving up two singles. 3-0 paints the inside edge, 3-1. Maiden Fernandez goes to FIU. His FIU teammate, Austin Shenton, hit 375 with Wareham last summer. Second best. And that pitch is hit fairly well and deep down the line and left. Antico giving chase, and uh, that ball is foul. Just foul. A long strike makes it three and two. Austin Shenton had ridiculous numbers last season for Wareham. I mean, we weren't here, obviously. but Emotionally, we were here. <laughs> yeah. 3-2 pitch to Fernandez. Popped up, foul, out of play. Down the left field line. Shenton was named the postseason MVP, hit 522 in the postseason. Three bombs, 12 RBIs. As the full count pitch misses low. And Fernandez is on with, with walk. And he hit a walk-off against these guys in the championship series. So Fernandez on first, one down. Jorge Arenas to the plate. And Shenton, by the way, was drafted this season or in this MOB draft, as that one's roped down the right field line, foul, out of play, 0-1. Fifth round, I believe it was, for Austin Shenton. Let's get our stats guy on it. By stats guy, I believe Jonah means our producer, Javik Blake. Or whoever's listening to the broadcast and wants to help us out. The 0-1. Low in the dirt, good block by Guangarino. Count even one and one. Fifth round by the Mariners. Shenton was drafted. Thanks, Shavik. He's actually from that area, too. Arena so for one here in game two. Irvin sets in, throws over to first. Good move. Did they get him? No. Back just safely is Fernandez. Good move from Garrett Irvin. And we'll wait the 1-1. One -one. Second straight summer that Jorge Arenas is spending in Chatham. 11 at bat, or 111 at bats last summer with the Anglers. 10 RBIs, batted a buck 98. The 1-1 one -one curveball drops in at the knees. One ball and two strikes. Arena is fouled out to Guangarena behind the plate his first time up. Good play made by the catcher. Irvin a deep breath, the one two. Curve ball grounded towards short, diving stop made by Stevens. Flips to second for one, they got him. Baker doesn't even attempt to throw to first. It was a close play at second base. Stevens kind of bobbled that ball after he made the stop, but he makes the play two down. As good as that play was from Chad Stevens, got to give credit to Darren Baker also with the stretch and holding on to that flip. Like a first baseman there. Like a first baseman. Two away, top four. Wareham six, 
Chatham 3, game 2 of a doubleheader here on Father's Day at Spillane Field. We'll wish Happy Father's Day one more time to all the dads out there. And grandpas? First pitch, swing and a miss on a fastball, 0-1 to Vincenzo Bologna. <laughs> 0 for 1 today is Bologna, grounded out to the third baseman, Winkler, his first time up. The 0-1 from Irvin. Breaking ball on the dirt, 1-1. One and one. Bologna in left field here in game two for the Anglers. Irvin delivers the 1-1. One, one. Curveball at the knees for strike two. One strike away from getting out of the inning. Irvin unleashes the 1-2. Fouled off. Count stays one ball and two strikes. Irvin sets on the first base side of the rubber. The one-two pitch. Breaking ball high and away. Count even two and two. Vincenzo Bologna, candidate for best name in the Cape League. Is, are the names voted on by you? Yes, they're all subjective. <laughs> two-two. Curveball, throws him. On the outside corner for strike three. Second strikeout for Irvin. Vincenzo Bologna goes down looking. We head to the bottom of the fourth, 6-3. The Wareham lead will be Gateman, Baseball Network. Come on over to BB's Bar and Grill for food, drinks, and fun. Located on Cranberry Highway, come in to sample the delicious eats or relax with a drink while enjoying live entertainment. BB's is one of our team meal partners. One of the area's best restaurants is located right up the street, Brewfish Bar and Eatery. Brewfish offers 20 rotating craft beers on tap and creative pub food. Check out their off-the-menu brunch with a Bloody Mary bar and five dollar mimosas on Sundays. Join us for outdoor dining and drinks under the tent or for live music. Located on Route 105 in Marion. What's donated here stays here. All blood that is donated to Cape Cod Healthcare stays on Cape Cod to help the lives of your friends, family, and neighbors. Learn more about donating blood, platelets, or hosting a blood drive at capecodhealth.org slash blood center. Located in Wareham Crossing, Coastal Orthodontics knows the importance of a healthy smile. Dr. Kevin Oliveira and his team at Coastal Orthodontics are a patient-focused practice, delivering professional, effective orthodontic treatment based on the individual clinical needs of each patient, resulting in beautiful smiles in a timely manner. With 10 years of experience using Invisalign, Coastal Orthodontics uses the most up-to-date dental equipment. Braden Ward, Matthew Rudick, Darren Baker, the 9 1 2 hitters due up for the Gateman here in the bottom of the fourth. Six runs on seven hits thus far for Wareham. Three runs, five hits for Chatham. And in steps Ward. Lefty 0 for 1 with an RBI in this game. Grounded out to the shortstop Ramirez is first time up. And now he lines one to left field. A base hits. It takes a wicked hop, but Bologna fields it on that hop. And Ward has his second hit of the summer. On with the leadoff single here in the fourth. The Washington Husky hit 321 this spring at UW. And now this is just his second game of the summer. He arrived a few days ago, already has a couple of hits. Let'll bring up Matthew Rudick. So Jonah mentioned Vincenzo, Vincenzo, excuse me, Bologna, as candidate for best name in the Cape Cod League. First pitch, runner going, pitch misses low and in, and actually gets away from the catcher Smith. Ward taking off for third, and he gets there without a throw. Heads up, base running from Braden Ward. A stolen base, and then he moves to third on the wild pitch. 
He's 90 feet away with nobody down here in the fourth. Braden Ward not only showing off the bat, but showing off the base running skills as well. He's got a lot of speed. That's why he plays center field. An excellent center fielder. As Vernon's going to tap off his cleats and get some mud off the bottom of his shoes. Ward was 26 for 31 in stolen bases at Washington this season. Also had 19 stolen bases his freshman year, which led the Pac-12. So Vincenzo Bologna, you've already nominated for best name in the Cape League. Yes. Do you agree with that nomination? I agree with the nomination as long as there's other nominations. You're not, you're not name giving him the title. No, I said he's a candidate. He's a candidate. So quick story as Rudick settles back in. Infield in for Chatham, the 1-0. The paints the outside corner, 1-1. One one. I broadcasted in the Northwoods League last summer, and I'm going to give a quick shout-out to Brian McLaughlin, who's actually in the, Nor er, in the Cape League this summer as well with the Whitey Red Sox. Him and a friend of mine, I'll give Lucas Moore a shout-out to, 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss on a fastball outside, 1-2. and two. They actually did that. They created Twitter polls for the Northwoods League last summer and had, I forget if they did, like, first team, second team all name, or they just crowned it. I think they just crowned a champion. And it was pretty popular. I'll give them it. You know, hmm. there were, as Rudick takes the ball alone inside, two and two, there were a solid, once people realized what they were doing and teams actually, like, team Twitter accounts actually gave it a retweet or two, Yeah, there was a solid, you know, four, five, six hundred votes on each of these polls. How about that? I already forget who won. The 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball, chop back up the middle. Ward's going to take off for home. He scores. Rudick is out at first, but it's an RBI ground out for Rudick. And the heads-up base running from Ward on the wild pitch, which got him from first to third, leads to a run at 7-3 Wareham. Not a bad idea. That... First team, second team, all name thing? Not at all. I think we should explore that. I wonder if each team should have a representative, though. I guess That's you want to get. That's what they did. Okay. As Baker steps in from the left side, first pitch. Fastball right down Main Street, 0 and 1. They. Now, some teams might have had more than others. There might yeah. have been, say, three guys from one team and one guy from another, but there was a representative from each team. 0-1 slapped foul on the third baseline, 0-2. And, and just one more clarification. The Northwoods League, there's a north and a south division. So, obviously, we had we didn't see any of the other division. Um, so, it was just one half of the Northwoods League. But those six, seven teams in the division all got involved. 0-2 softly grounded towards short. Ramirez throws the first in time. Just beat Baker. Two down here in the fourth. Oh, Baker Speed made that very, very close. I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, Cam Guangarena should be on that list. 100%. We, we'll have to keep track. We will keep track. iPhone notes. Jacob Teeter steps in from the left side. First pitch to him. Ooh, checked his swing, went around on a nasty off-speed pitch from Vernon, 0-1. Warham 7, Chatham 3, top, bottom of the fourth, excuse me, here at Spillane Field. The 0-1, swing and a miss on another changeup, 0-2. Teeter got his first hit of the summer, his last time up in the second inning. Two RBI single. Part of the six-run second for Wareham. 0-2 misses outside, one ball and two strikes. Teeter waving the bat above his back shoulder. Now rests it. 1-2. 
down low in the dirt. Count even two balls and two strikes. So those are our two nominations right now. Vince yes. Vincenzo Bologna and Cam Guangarino. Kaden Polkovich also. The 2-2 offering. Hard hit ball at the left center field. Bologna chasing, can't get there, it's in the gap. That ball rolls all the way to the wall. And Jacob teeters in with his second double of the season, his second double tonight. Two out double in the fourth for Teeter and in steps Adrian Del Castillo. Okay, this makes this story even more complete as our producer Javik Blake has found the tweet for my good friend Lucas Moore. They called it because of the World Cup last summer. They called it the World Cup of names for the Northwoods League. And you know who won it? Dallas Beaver, who is listed. First pitch, catches the outside corner 0-1 to Adrian Del Castillo. At one point was listed as a temp on the Wareham roster and could be joining the Gateman quite soon. So if Beaver does in fact come, that would really bring that full circle. Yes, it would. 0-1, swing and a miss on a breaking ball, 0-2. Wow, Javik Blake's a rock star. He really is. How about that? More than just a pretty face. Del Castillo one for one with a walk here in game two. RBI single in the second. The 0-2. Fouled off behind home plate out of play. Count stays 0-2. Del Castillo out of Miami. Part of the freshman All-American team. 0-2 swing and a miss, strike three. He goes down swinging. And that'll end the fourth. One run on two hits. No One left on base for the Gateman in the fifth. In the fourth, we head to the top of the fifth. <laughs> Wareham seven, Chatham three. We'll be right back in the game in Baseball Network. Whether you're brewing a lager or an ale, Stone Path Malt has got you covered. Stone Path Malt, the local provider of quality malt for all your favorite New England craft breweries, is right here in Wareham. For your next night out, stop by their new tap room. Village Signs of Mattapoisett. They do it all, from logo design, trucks and buildings, to boats. Village Signs has proudly served southern New England for over 35 years. Visit them at villagesignsinc.com for all your signage needs. The Gateman would like to thank Wareham Country Market for helping to feed the Gateman players and staff after games. They are located about a quarter of a mile from the field on Route 6, offering a convenience store, a Dunkin' Donuts, and a deli. Wareham House of Pizza has been serving Wareham and Marion for over 40 years with steak and cheese, pizza, and subs. Located in Shaw's Plaza, head on over for pickup or let them deliver to you. Beat the heat and join us at Waterways, a water experience unlike any other this side of the bridge. Open daily, head over to the water park on Route 28, the Cranberry Highway. The 99 Restaurant is a proud sponsor of the Cape Cod Baseball League. Visit them in Centerville, Falmouth, Mashpee, Wareham, or Yarmouth this summer and try some local flavor from the winner of the Cape Times Best Restaurant for Takeout. The 99, always the real deal. Head of the fifth here at Spillane Field. 7-3, the way they lead over Chatham. Top of the order due up for the Anglers. Tyler Doan steps in from the right side. First pitch catches the outside corner. 0-1. Garrett Irvin back out for his third inning of work for Wareham. Doans, Pokovic, and Ogin. 1-2-3, due up for Chatham. The 0-1. Breaking ball. Just misses inside. One ball and one strike. Seven runs on nine hits here in game two for Wareham. Three runs on five hits for the Anglers. The 1-1. One, one. 
Curveball drops in Athenese, one and two. It's got a nice 12-6 action to it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Tyler Doan's playing at WVU this past season. 316 batting average. One, two, hit hard and well to left center. Ward chasing and makes the catch in the alley. One away. After game one, his head coach, Randy Mazzi, said he put a little too much pressure on himself. The key is having fun with Dones. Once he started having fun, he closed the season on a 14-game hit streak. Went 28 for 59, a 475 batting average. First pitch to the righty, Polkovic catches the inside corner, 0-1. Oh That's one heck of a way to end your season. Of course, West Virginia losing in heartbreaking fashion. 0-1, oh catching the inside edge, 0-2. Oh in the NCAA Regionals. Walk off Grand Slam with two outs in the bottom of the ninth by Texas A&M. Sent West Virginia home. 0-2 oh, misses low in the dirt, one ball and two strikes. And that was a game West Virginia had, now the 1-2 to Polkovic, curveball chop foul. West Virginia, uh, you can't quote me on this, I know it was greater than a five-run lead. I believe it was a seven-run lead in the seventh inning for West Virginia of that game. They ended up losing to Texas A&M. The one-two. Curveball chopped foul down the third baseline. Polkovich is one for one with a walk here in game two. Walked in the first inning, singled in the third, and ended up coming around to score on a wild pitch. The one-two delivery. Swing and a miss on a curveball, strike three. Strike Irvin's out. third strikeout of the night. Strikeout brought to you by Lang, Exafaris, and Bullard. Head to lxblaw.com to seek a trial attorney in the New Bedford area. Two down, top of the fifth, 7-3, the Wareham lead, and in steps Jamal Ogin. First pitch, a ball outside, 1-0. Ogin two for two here in game two. Takes a ball just inside that time. 2-0. Jamal Ogin went to the same high school as our fields reporter, Addison Van Patten. The 2-0. Curveball drops in on the outside corner. 2-1. and one. Two one pitch misses low and in, 3-1. and one. And once again, Javik Blake coming through. West Virginia, West Virginia was up 9-1 in the seventh of that game before losing on that walk-off grand slam. The 3-1 from Irvin. High and in, ball four. And Jamal Ogin has reached all three times here in game number two of the doubleheader. That's why he was the player to watch. He knows how to draw walks. Did it a lot this season. Drew walks in his first five games. Not in game one. First walk today. Coming into today, he was six for 17. That's a 353 average with six walks. 522 on base percentage. He didn't walk in game one. But that's his seventh walk of the season right there. First pitch catches the outside edge, 0 and 1 to Paxton Wallace. Wallace 0 for 2 here in game two. Struck out looking in the first inning. Flew out to Rudick in right field in the third. Ogin a decent sized lead over there at first base. Irvin throws over there now and diving back safely is Ogin. Wallace at the hot corner. Here in game two for the Anglers. Bats from the left side. Irvin sets, unleashes the 0-1. Swing and a miss on a curveball. Pretty pitch, 0-2. Irvin a long look in. Sets and deals the 0-2. Curveball in the dirt, good block by Guangarena. One ball and two strikes. 
We mentioned in the first game how Wallace had to replace Alex Bohm over at third at Wichita State. WSU manager Todd Butler says Wallace reminds him of Bohm. They actually developed a pretty good relationship. Bum, the third overall pick in last year's MLB draft. The one two blooped out into center. Ward chases in and makes the catch right at his chin. There's that speed of Braden Ward. Paid off twice in that inning. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Wareham seven, Chatham three. We'll be right back in the Gateman Baseball, Baseball Network. Stop by the Ansel S. Gurney House where you will find a unique shopping and dining experience. Whether shopping for a special occasion or just to treat yourself, you'll find what you're looking for in one of the 11 themed rooms. There's also a cafe serving fresh homemade lunches overlooking the extensive gardens. The Ansel S. Gurney House is located at 403 County Road in Marion. Located on the Cape Cod Canal, Keystone Place at Buzzards Bay is the area's newest rental independent living, assisted living, and memory care community. With some of the area's largest apartments and an ultra-inclusive monthly service package, Keystone Place is a life-fulfilling retirement community unlike any other. Discover Keystone Place, the best option in Cape Cod. Located on Route 6 right here in Wareham, Cool Cone is a Cape Cod institution like no other. From smooth soft serve to fresh golden seafood, there's something for everyone. With a chocolate dipped cone in one hand and a putter in the other, enjoy a cold treat and a round of mini golf at your local favorite Cool Cone. The law firm of Lang, Exafaris, and Bullard, providing families and businesses in the greater New Bedford community with legal services for 40 years. We look forward to serving you. For an appointment, call 508-992-1270. We invite you to learn more about the law firm of Lang, Exafaris, and Bullard by visiting our website, lxblaw.com. laugh at me. Hey, Party in the USA is playing over the loudspeaker. I'm going to sing. It's just going to happen. You have a good voice. I appreciate that. You're welcome. 7-3, the gate mid lead over the Anglers. Guangarena, Antico, and Stevens. 5-6-7 due up here in the fifth. Guangarena, one for two here in game two of the doubleheader. RBI double in the second, grounded out to the third baseman, Arenas, in the first. First pitch to the lefty. Fastball skied way high. Shallow left field and actually on the infield. Shortstop Ramirez ranges under it, makes the catch, one away. Left fielder number 16, Mike Antico from St. John. Mike Antico steps in now for the Gateman. Antico one for two as well in this ball game. First pitch from Vernon. Misses outside, 1-0. and oh. Austin Vernon came in with two outs in the second. Solid few innings of relief for the big righty, 1-0. High and away, two balls and no strikes. That was a big time second inning for the Gateman offense. Two straight days of baseball where all the Gateman need were uh, one big inning. The 2-0. Foul tipped back off the fencing in front of us. 2-1 to Mike Antico. Singled in the first, struck out looking in the third. Bat resting on his back shoulder, the pitch. Popped up, shallow left once again. Slicing toward the line and making the catch. And left field is Bologna. Two away. Again, just a seven inning game here in game two. Also played seven in game one. A five nothing victory for the Gateman. Wareham six outs away from a two and oh day. And three straight wins. First pitch to Stevens. Low ball one. Chad Stevens, two for two, his first multi-hit game of the year. 
bunt single in the second, singled it in the third. The 1-0. Breaking ball misses low and away, 2-0. The last game going on today. It says Cotuit and YD are still in the bottom of the seventh, tied at nine. 2-0 pitch, fastball just misses inside, 3-0. Are all the other games wrapped up? And Vernon steps off. I'm going to go around the finals one more time from around the league. 3 0 right down Main Street, 3 and 1. Brewster taking down Hyannis, 12 4 in their second game. Harwich over Falmouth, 7 1. In their second game, Bourne over Orleans, 2-1. 3-1 pitch, chopped on the third base line and foul. Count now full three and two. So Bourne and Orleans split their doubleheader. Harwich sweeps against Falmouth. Brewster sweeps against Hyannis. So Brewster with the sweep gets back to 500. They're three and three. How about Brewster, their offensive day? 12, 12 runs in the second game, 11 runs in the first game. That's 23 runs. Good math. Thank you. <laughs> Who else did you say swept? Harwich? Harwich. So Brewster and Harwich were both 1-3 and three in the Eastern Division coming into today. They both swept. They're back to 500. Stevens takes ball four low. He's on with a two-out walk here in the fifth. Hyannis still searching for that first victory. Hyannis, now 0-5-1. Let's begin the year. Kotuit, meanwhile, lost game one to YD. And as far as we know, they're tied at nine right now, but it says they've been in the bottom of the seventh for forever. First pitch high at the eyes, 1-0 to Winkler. Kotuit coming into today led the West. Wareham and Falmouth were tied at 2-1-1 one one for second in the West. So Kotuit lost game one. They dropped to 4-2. and two. Wareham now 3-1-1. One 1-0 one. One -oh pitch catches the outside edge, 1-1. One and, one. And, and Falmouth was the team that got swept by Harwich, correct? Yes. So Wareham now in sole possession of second place in the Western Division. Again, just six, well, this being game number six. For some teams, today was game six and seven. Wareham's gotten rained out. 1-1, one, one just misses low, 2-1. and one. Winkler awaits the 2-1. Fastball paints the outside corner, 2-2. Two two. So a win for Wareham in game two would put them at the top of the Western Division standings. Correct. If Kotuit also loses. Correct. The 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball, Winkler checked his swing. Did he go around? No, he didn't. And meanwhile, Stevens just swiped second base without a throw. There wasn't a word about Stevens going from the middle infield. I don't know if the catcher Smith realized it. And the count is full. And now a duck on the pond for Winkler. The 3-2. Fastball, line drive, center field. Polkovich chasing a base hit. Rounding third is Stevens. The throw cut off, and Stevens scores standing up. An RBI single for Jack Winkler, his second RBI of game two. And Wareham leads 8-3 in the fifth. One of the best at-bats for Jack Winkler this season. Boy, he smoked it to left center field, and he needed that. Jack Winkler, bit of a cold streak. But maybe that'll get him going. He was 0 for 3 in game 1. 
He was 0 for 2 here in Game 2. Before that, he did pick up an RBI in the ground out. So he is now just 1 for 6 today, but he has two RBIs. And they're going to leave Vernon in there, just trying to finish out this fifth inning. In steps Braden Ward from the left side. Ward one for two with an RBI. The pitch. Softly grounded right side. Dones chases to his right, now throws, and it, Ward beat it out. He's safe. An infield single for Braden Ward. Winkler moves up 90 feet to second. And Ward has his fir first multi-hit game of the season. Stone's trying to do a little bit too much. He had to go a long way over to his left to pick that out of the dirt. But then spinning and firing and an off-balance throw might have gotten Braden Ward had he just planted his feet and fired. But you know, he was off-balance, so maybe that wasn't an option. Matthew Rudick steps into center stage. First pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball low and in. 1-0. Rudick 0-for-1 with two walks here in game two, but it was a productive out. He had an RBI ground out to Ben Ramirez at shortstop his last time up. The 0-1 delivery. Fastball chopped foul. 0-2. Runners on first and second, two outs, bottom of the fifth here at Spillane Field, 8-3. The Chatham deficit to Wareham. Rudick trying to deliver one more insurance run for the game. Winkler leads off second, Ward off of first, and now Vernon steps off. Again, there were two outs in this inning right away. Vernon got Guangarena and Antico to pop out. And then a walk, a stolen base, an RBI single, and then the infield single by Ward. 0-2 curveball misses high, one ball and two strikes. And this game is taking a lot longer than game one. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Just the way you said it. Game one lasted an hour and 55 minutes. This game's already been an hour and 53. 1-2 pitch, flared out into left, down the left field line, and in foul territory, and I believe that ball dropped. It did. We couldn't quite see it because of the bleacher down the third baseline and this giant light pole right in front of us. Left fielder Bologna was chasing and couldn't make the catch. New life for Rudick. Matthew Rudick in right field once again tonight for Wareham. The Gateman hoping to complete the sweep, doubleheader sweep of Chatham. The one, two. Swing and a miss on an off speed pitch, strike three. Vernon gets out of the inning with the strikeout, but the Gateman had another run on two hits. They lead two aboard. We head to the sixth. Jonah Carp will have your play by play. It's 8 3 Wareham. We'll be right back in the Gateman Baseball Network. Joanne Stevenson and William Ravis Real Estate, a double play when it comes to selling or buying a home. With 19 years of experience in residential real estate and ranked number one globally, they are sure to help you with all of your hopes and dreams. William Ravis Real Estate, the official real estate company for the Boston Red Sox, and Joanne Stevenson, your hometown agent, proudly support the Wareham Gateman. Located on the Cape Cod Canal, Keystone Place at Buzzards Bay is the area's newest rental independent living, assisted living, and memory care community. With some of the area's largest apartments and an ultra-inclusive monthly service package, Keystone Place is a life-fulfilling retirement community unlike any other. Discover Keystone Place, the best option in Cape Cod. Located on Route 6 right here in Wareham, 
Cool Cone is a Cape Cod institution like no other. From smooth soft serve to fresh golden seafood, there's something for everyone. With a chocolate dipped cone in one hand and a putter in the other, enjoy a cold treat and a round of mini golf at your local favorite, Cool Cone. The law firm of Lang, Exafaris, and Bullard, providing families and businesses in the greater New Bedford community with legal services for 40 years. We look forward to serving you. For an appointment, call 508-992-1270. We invite you to learn more about the law firm of Lang, Exafaris, and Bullard by visiting our website, lxblaw.com. Legacy Insurance Agency at 213 Main Street here in Wareham can offer you coverage for all your insurance needs. We have the bundle discounts, the accident forgiveness, the vanishing deductible, no loss, etc. But unlike those gimmick companies, we can quote you with multiple carriers. So forget the lizard and price tool and come talk to a professional. We'll help you find what's right for you. Got legal trouble? Attorney Mark Deshays is here to help the greater New Bedford area with real estate and business law, estate planning, and probate. Visit him today. Struggling with changes in mood, sleep, stress, or a sense of hopelessness? Finding it hard to be the man you want to be? Get the information and tools you need for mental, emotional, and relationship health at massmen.org. Courage starts with the first step. Over Chatham, 8-3 in the top of the sixth inning. Second game of the doubleheader between Chatham and Wareham. Gateman took the first game, 5-0. Now leading by five here in the top of the sixth. Brady Smith, Drenis Ozuna, Aiden Fernandez, a 3-2 up. New pitcher in for Wareham, Eric Torres. Nobody on, nobody out. First pitch from Torres. Slapped foul. Right side, one, uh, nothing and one. Jonah Cart. Now standing next to Ryan LeMay. Second straight day. Yeah, thanks for having me back on. Of course. We missed you. <laughs> Another great day for the Wareham offense, huh? Oh, yeah. You might be the good luck charm. I might be. It. That must be it. The 0 1. Taken low and in. One ball and one strike. So Gabe had to depart for a little bit, just like yesterday. So we brought Ryan on. If you weren't with us yesterday, Ryan's our beat writer. Are you doing one article for two games? Or? I'm going to do one article for two games okay. tonight. Yeah, that's Chopped the plan. foul, left side, one and two. A lot to talk about, though. Oh, yeah. A lot of storylines going on right it's gonna now. It's going to be a long article. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a long one. A lot of words. <laughs> a lot of words. That's what I'm known for. Write a chapter book. One and two the count to Brady Smith. He's one for two today. Was caught stealing after he singled in the first. Slapped foul right side. Count holds at one ball and two strikes. Brady Smith from the, fr uh, the friendliest place on earth. Niceville, Florida. Rising junior at the University of Florida. Count holds at one ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch from Torres. Line back up the middle over the head of the second baseman, Baker, but Ward right there to make the catch. One away. Braden Ward showing off his athleticism, his speed, making the catch on the soft liner. One away, nobody on. Drenis Ozuna, the new batter. Grounded out twice tonight, 0 for 2. Two ground outs to the shortstop, Chad Stevens. Last at bat came in the fourth inning. Gateman leading 8-3. Left-handed pitcher, right-handed batter. Torres the third pitcher for the Gateman here in game two. Coming in for Garrett Irvin. Irvin looked good. He was uncomfortable at first, but once he got a hang of his off-speed pitches, he looked very good out there on the mound. Irvin was making his first appearance with Wareham after Salucci made his first appearance. The pitch, cut on and missed. Strike one. You ever play baseball, Ryan? I have never played baseball, no, not even t-ball. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. 
You always love the sport. I've always loved the sport, though. How, how can you not love the sport? The 0 1. Fastball swung on and fouled away. Nothing in two. How about you, Joe? Did you ever play any, any baseball? On three separate occasions, yeah. Realized very quickly I wasn't <laughs> very good. It's always afraid of the ball. Yeah, that might be a problem for trying to play baseball. It was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was always good for emotional support. The 0 2. Breaking ball. Misses along the outer half, one and two. Who's your team? Reds. I'm all Boston sports, so Red Sox. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of losing recently. Oh, yeah. That's all we do. Yeah. The one, two. Taken downstairs. Nope. A little bit low, but a late call. Den uh, Drenis Ozuna rung up. I think he's ready to go home. Umpire here. Michael Finn calling the balls and the strikes. Late call by Finn. Two away. Nobody on base. 8-3, Gateman over the A's. The pitch. Fastball darts over to the outer half. Nothing in one. Aiden Fernandez, the new batter. One for one. He singled in the second inning. Reached base twice. Walked in the fourth. Nobody on base, two away. The 0 1. Taken up and away, 1 and 1. Have you always been a Boston sports fan, Ryan? Yeah, I grew up in Cape Cod, so I followed them when I was a little kid. And so you've moved them. around a lot? I have moved around a lot, yeah, but originally from Cape Cod, so. The 1 1. Sits low and in, 2 and 1. So, no, I don't want to hear any of the bandwagon talk when I'm a <laughs> sports fan. <laughs> I get it a lot. So you've lived in New Jersey? Yeah. California? Yep. Texas? Texas. What am I missing? Virginia, Georgia. The 2-1. Taken downstairs, three balls and one strike. Yep, been all over the map. And no interest in ever rooting for a team no, from never, Texas never. and California? No. The three one. Right down Broadway, three and two. You're a New York sports fan, correct? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You did not luck out as much as I did with my uh, sports fandom, unfortunately. No, no. Mets, Jets, and Knicks. Yeah, that's about as worse as it gets right there. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Nobody on base two away, and Torres steps off the rubber. The Jets might have a good season. I, I, I'm pretty hopeful for the Jets this season. I think they have a good good roster. 3-2. Lifted in the air, foul, and out of play. Count holds of three balls and two strikes. Jorge Arenas on deck. Nobody on base. Two men out. Meanwhile, your Knicks, they had everything go wrong this summer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't remind me. Yeah. Free agency hasn't even started. Yeah, that's how bad it's been. The 3-2. Cut on and miss strike three. Aiden Fernandez goes down on strikes. Two straight strikeouts for Eric Torres to end the sixth. Anglers go down. One, two, three. A perfect six for Eric Torres. No runs, no hits. Nobody left on. And after five and a half, it's the Gateman eight and the Anglers three. We'll be right back. Located in Wareham Crossing, Coastal Orthodontics knows the importance of a healthy smile. Dr. Kevin Oliveira and his team at Coastal Orthodontics are a patient-focused practice, delivering professional, effective orthodontic treatment based on the individual clinical needs of each patient, resulting in beautiful smiles in a timely manner. With 10 years of experience using Invisalign, Coastal Orthodontics uses the most up-to-date dental equipment. Cape Cod Coca-Cola thanks you for supporting the Cape Cod Baseball League. Cape Cod Coca-Cola has been proudly refreshing the community for over 30 years and we're honored to support the CCBL and many other wonderful organizations on the Cape. Earn a bachelor's or master's degree, complete a certificate, or take a single course through the Division of Continuing Education and Graduate Studies at Curry College. Classes run days, evenings, and weekends in Milton and Plymouth. To learn more about programs in business, criminal justice, education, nursing, and more, visit curry.edu. 
Clobbered high and deep to right center field, and this one is gone, a home run. That home run's brought to you by Eastern Propane and Oil, another scholarship for a deserving youth. Eastern Propane and Oil, we're in your neighborhood. They've been over Chatham, 8-3 in the bottom of the sixth inning. Darren Baker, Jacob Teeter, 8-3. Bill Castillo is a three do up. New pitcher in for the Anglers, in for Austin Vernon. Austin Merriman from Midland, Texas. Six foot one, 215 pounds. Not quite as big as Austin Vernon, who is six foot seven, 290. Then again, it doesn't get much bigger than Austin Vernon. Rising sophomore at Midland College. 302 ERA this past season through 80 and a third. 97 strikeouts in those 80 innings. Darren Baker, the first man up, and the first pitch. Slapped foul, left side, nothing in one. Jonah Karp, now standing next to Addison Van Patten, our field reporter. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. The Feels one. different being up here instead of down on the field. Over the outside corner, nothing in two. Well, is it still raining? No. <laughs> cool. Nothing in two. Strike three. Darren Baker swung on and missed. Second strikeout for Darren Baker tonight, at least in game two. That'll bring up Jacob Teeter with nobody on base, one away in the bottom of the sixth. Different perspective up here than down there. Very much so. You get to hear everything that they're saying down in the dugout, what they're saying about the pitcher, what their expectations are. They're probably more interesting than Gabe and I. Um, Line drive to straightaway center field. Going back, Polkovich makes the catch. Hopping up in the air. Two away. I wouldn't say better, just different. <laughs> I said more interesting. Different conversations for sure. Oh, yeah. Nobody on base, two away. I think they get a little more frustrated than you guys do. Oh, you no, know, you'd be surprised. <laughs> we get pretty frustrated up here. Adrian Del Castillo, the new batter. First pitch on the outer half, strike one. You could hear what we're saying down there, right? I can. Yeah. <laughs> the 1 swung on a miss, strike two. I guess you can't hear our frustrations. That usually happens off the air. We could bring on Javik Blake, our producer. He knows all about that. Nobody on base, two away. Gateman by five. The 0 2. Lifted foul and out of play. Count holds it, nothing in two. Del Castillo actually talks about how he likes the weather up here better than Miami. Miami. Living in Miami his whole life, he says he likes the rain. Well, a lot of rain right now. Fouled off, nothing in two. Must feel like home? Maybe not. It's a little hotter there. Yeah. As humid as it is here, it's definitely hum more humid there. Does it rain a lot in California? It does not. Ooh. We're normally in a drought. Pitch low and away. One ball and two strikes. A lot of players on this team from California. Merriman quickly into the windup. Roller on the ground, right side, scooped up by Dones. Fires the first in time, a one, two, three inning for Merriman. Gets Adrian Del Castillo to ground out a worm burner to end the inning. After six, Wareham still by five. You're listening to the Gateman Baseball Network. We'll be right back. Legacy Insurance Agency at 213 Main Street here in Wareham can offer you coverage for all your insurance needs. We have the bundle discounts, the accident forgiveness, the vanishing deductible, no loss, etc. But unlike those gimmick companies, we can quote you with multiple carriers. So forget the lizard and price tool and come talk to a professional. We'll help you find what's right for you. Got legal trouble? Attorney Mark Deshays is here to help the greater New Bedford area with real estate and business law, estate planning, and probate. Visit him today. Struggling with changes in mood, sleep, stress, or a sense of hopelessness? Finding it hard to be the man you want to be? Get the information and tools you need for mental, emotional, and relationship health at massmen.org. Courage starts with the first step. Get Gateman gear. 
Check out the latest styles and colors of your favorite Gateman apparel. Also in stock, a large selection of Cape League items, including tickets to the All-Star Game. Test your pitching speed and pick up a souvenir ball, all at our merchandise booth. The Mezzaluna Restaurant is a family-run Italian restaurant celebrating 80 years in business. Located on Main Street in Buzzards Bay, Mezzaluna specializes in Italian cuisine, a lunch menu that's the best deal in town, and serving some of Cape Cod's famous prime rib every Wednesday and Saturday. Come enjoy the feast at Mezzaluna, the Italian family restaurant. Here in game two of this doubleheader, Wareham trying to sweep Chatham. First meeting since the championship series of last year where Wareham swept Chatham. After sweeping Chatham in the four regular season meetings last year. So dating back to last season, if the Gateman can hold on to this victory or this lead to pull out a victory, it would be eight straight wins against the Anglers. Jorge Arenas, Vincenzo Bologna, and Tyler Dones, the three do up against Jack Anger. From Washington State, rising junior at the University of Washington. A 320 earned run average this past season through 45 innings. 61 strikeouts in 45 innings. First pitch. Over the inside corner, nothing in one. Jorge Arenas 0 for 2 tonight. Pop out to the catcher, Guangarena, and then a ground out to Chad Stevens over at short. Top of the seventh. The pitch. Taken low and in, 1 and 1. Jack Anger stands at 6 foot 5, 220 pounds, a big right handed pitcher. Only walked 17 compared to those 61 strikeouts. The pitch, taken downstairs, two balls and one strike. Really impressive. Yes, 28 separate appearances, 45 innings. Dominant in relief. Vincenzo Bologna on deck. One and two the count. Scoreboard says one and two, the pitch. Lifted in the air along the right field line, chasing Rudiff back, still back toward the corner. He reaches and dives. It lands in, foul, in fair ground. And I'm not sure what the call is. They're going to call it a, a ground rule double because that ball bounced up and over the bench out there where the bullpen is for the Gateman, and Otsuka had no play. Or Rudick had no play, excuse me. So Arenas goes back to second base. He was standing on third. Leads off the top of the seventh for Chatham with a ground rule double. Brings up the number nine batter, Vincenzo Bologna. Comes to bat here with a runner off second. Nobody out in the top of the seventh inning. Wareham leading by five. A right on right matchup. Anger checks the runner at second base. First pitch fouled off. Nothing in one. Jack Anger, a fifth generation UW student. His dad rode, his grandpa played football at the University of Washington. Checks the runner at second base, rain coming down, swung on and missed, nothing in two. Rain continues to come down, it's been a slightly on and off. But ever since the second inning, rain's been falling. The 0-2. On the outside corner, strike three called. First out of the top of the seventh, it comes via the strikeout. Jack Anger. One away in the top of the seventh inning. That Gateman strikeout brought to you by Lang, Exaferis, and Buller. Head to LXBlaw.com to seek a trial attorney in the New Bedford area. Arena still at second base. 
Chatham trailing by five. Back to the top of the order with Tyler Domes. 0 for 2. Two flyouts. He walked and then was caught stealing back in the first inning. The first of two caught on the base paths in that inning. Brendan Salucci starting the game for Wareham. The pitch just misses the inside corner, 1-0. Jack Anger likes to eat Jimmy John's before each college game. <laughs> it's routine for him. Whatever helps. The 1-0. Taken off the outside of the plate. Two balls and no strikes. Interesting routine. Well, if you have a superstition, you have a superstition. Runner off second base with one away. The 2-0. <laughs> Misses the inside corner. Three balls and no strikes. You have any weird quirks like that, Gabe? No. I don't think so. Okay. What do you mean, like pre-broadcast routine? Yeah, or before you're, you're watching a game. 3-0 on the outside corner. Three balls, one strike. Not that I can think of. You don't have, like, a favorite jersey or a favorite chair to watch football? Okay, okay. When we're just talking about watching football. Well, I sure. mean superstitions in general. Runner off second base, one away, 3-1. Skips in the dirt, ball four. Tyler Dones works a one-out walk, and now there's two on base with one away for Chatham. Caden Polkovich will walk up to the plate. One for two today. Reach base twice, walked in the first. Came around to score on a Jamal O'Gean two-run homer. Singled in the third inning. Struck out swinging in the fifth. It's Dones off first and Arenas off second. Double play in order. The pitch. Waved at and missed. A home run cut. Missed all of it. Nothing in one to Polkovic. It's supposed to be an off day tomorrow for Wareham, but it's going to be a makeup game. Foul tipped. Actually, that ball just skipped away from Guangarena. Kaden Polkovich waved at that pitch. At first, I thought it was a foul ball. Turns out, it was just a strike that got away from Guangarena. Both runners advancing. Pass ball. But a strike. Nothing in two. Yeah, that pitch is right down the heart of the plate. Gateman leading 8-3. Two runners on base. The pitch. On the inside corner, strike three called. Jack Anger freezing up Caden Polkovich. Second strikeout for Anger. And now the Anglers are down to their final strike. Final out. Good pitch by Anger. So despite the double and the walk, Pass ball wasn't his fault at all on a pitch right down the middle, and he has two strikeouts, so a chance to get out of the inning and pitch a scoreless inning in the Cape. 8-3, Wareham over Chatham. Two runners on base, a pinch hitter, Keaton Rice. First pitch. Misses outside, one ball and no strikes. Keaton Rice from Illinois, six foot two, 195 pounds, left-handed batter. First time he's seen action in either game. The pitch. Paints the outer black, one and one. Rising junior at Bradley University, batted 215 this past season with a homer and 14 RBIs. Weight of the game on his shoulders. The one, one. Line drive to straightaway center field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Bologna, or rather Arenas, comes home to score. Dones right behind him. Two runs for the Anglers to make it 8-5. A two-run single 
for the pinch hitter, Keaton Rice. The shortstop, number 49, Ben And now this game gets a tad interesting because if Wallace can get on right here, then the tying run comes to the plate. Excuse me, it's actually Ben Ramirez. Runner at first with two away. Now just a three-run lead. First pitch, fouled off. Count nothing and one. Ben Ramirez coming in for Paxton Wallace. Exits after an 0 for 3 day. Right set first. The pitch. Ramirez just getting a piece of it. Count nothing in two. Now the anglers down to their final strike. Wareham on top, eight to five. In the top of the seventh inning. Two runs home in the inning on two hits and a walk. Jack Anger trying to shut the door. Ahead in the count, nothing in two. Wareham looking to sweep this doubleheader. They took game one, five to nothing. Leading by three here in game two. Anger looks in. Sets at the belt. Kicks, fires the pitch. Skips away from Guangarena. It was taken outside. Runner advances to second. Count one ball and two strikes. Ben Ramirez had two hits in the first game. Went two for three with two singles. Or a single and a double, rather. Manager Jerry Weinstein going out to the mound to have a chat with his relief pitcher. That was a little, I'm going to say strange, though. He didn't walk right to the mound. He walked and had a conversation with Guangarena at home plate. I don't know if they were talking about something with the home plate umpire as well or what, but then they go out to the mound and talk with anger, and now Weinstein back to the dugout. One and two the count. Keaton Rice off of second base. Gateman by three. The pitch from Anger. Slapped, foul along the left side. Count holds at one ball and two strikes. Ben Ramirez, a California native, goes to USC, a rising junior. 273 batter this past season with 24 RBIs. The pitch skips in the dirt right in front of Guangarena. Runner holds at second base. Two balls and two strikes to Ben Ramirez. Brady Smith would be next. Gateman leading by three. The pitch from Anger. Chopped foul to the right side. And Chatham just doesn't want to go home. Ramirez continues to fight. This will be pitch number seven of the at-bat. Two runs home in the inning. Eight to five, Wareham over Chatham. Two and two the count. Anger looks in, checks the runner at second, sets at the belt. Here's the pitch. Swung on, and Ramirez just got a piece of it. Count holds at two balls and two strikes. Ramirez prolonging this at bat, prolonging this inning, prolonging this game. Two and two the count. Two away. The pitch. Line drive, soft liner to short. Picked up by Stevens. Catches it in the air. And that'll do it. A soft line drive hit right to Chad Stevens, makes the catch for the final out. And the Gateman sweep the Anglers 
at home. 8-5, your final score in game two. And despite a little bit of a rough se seventh inning there for Jack Anger, he does his job, only allows a couple, and the game men walk away 8-5 victors. Each, these two teams will shake hands at home plate. This is a really good day of baseball for the Wareham Gateman. A two-game sweep of the Chatham Anglers, who were the hottest team in the league, at 4-1, and one, a plus-10 run differential coming in two today. Had the Anglers. And, I mean, the pitching, just a fabulous job, shutting out Chatham in game one, only allowing three runs before the seventh inning of this game. And the offense does their thing again. Eight runs on 11 hits here in game two. Five runs on 10 hits in game one. A 5 nothing victory in the first game, an 8-5 eight, eight, victory in the second game. Three straight victories for the Wareham Gateman. They'll head to Falmouth tomorrow to take on the Commodores. Make up the game that was supposed to be played last Tuesday. They'll play that tomorrow if the weather holds. Fighting off the elements tonight, and they pull out two wins at home. Final score once again, 8-5. Wareham taking down Chatham. And a two-game sweep here at Spillane Field. For Addison Van Patten, for Javik Blake, for Ryan LeMay, for Gabe Genovese, I'm Jonah Carp saying so long. Thanks for watching.